started again. Can, can I start again? Uh, I'm not entirely sure how to uh, how to do that, to be honest. Let's see. It's on again. Oh, OK, OK, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you can get more information uh, about the center uh, on our web portal. Um, one of the uh, activities uh, that we do at the center is to provide the infrastructure. And uh, in order to, to design the infrastructure, uh, in fact, we did a, a user needs assessment to understand the, what is the status quo and what are the needs uh, for, for the future. And based on this needs assessment, uh, we, we, we designed a system mainly for three uh, purposes. Uh, Self-learning, uh, which means to support the staff and students uh, to, to learn uh, about uh, cloud computing or uh, big data uh, by themselves uh, by, by providing an infrastructure which they can use without any setup. Uh, the second one is exploratory research. So uh, the idea is to support new uh, um, research uh, topics uh, by providing an infrastructure. And the last one is education. So providing a standard uh, infrastructure which can be used uh, uh, in different courses. Um, there are different design criteria uh, which are uh, taken into consideration while uh, designing the system. The first one is highly availability. So the idea was to provide a 24-7 infrastructure which people can access whenever they want to. So there is no queue. You don't need to wait to uh, to reach the resources. You just log in and uh, immediately a computing unit is provided to you. Uh, the second criteria was to provide a ready to use environment. So that means uh, you will find um, many software packages already installed on the platform. You don't need to install anything new unless that is something very, very specific. So basically, uh, when you log into the platform, you will be able to do the computation or the analysis that you want immediately. Uh, the third criteria was user friendliness. So basically, we aim to uh, provide an interface which is accessible from everywhere without installing any additional software. Um, the fourth criteria was to provide the GPUs. Uh, GPUs are something uh, quite important for uh, machine learning type of applications. Uh, basically, uh, today the CPUs are also quite powerful, but uh, in fact, uh, for for heavy uh, work like uh, deep learning uh, or advanced machine learning, you need, in fact, much more powerful resources. Um, GPUs are, in fact, quite common. So most probably the, the laptop or desktop that you use right now uh, has a, C, a GPU. Uh, for for drawing the windows uh, or um, uh, displaying the the images, playing the videos, uh, but unfortunately, not all the GPUs are available for computation purposes. So you need to have a special uh, types of uh, GPUs for that purpose, and we aim to provide, in fact, a GPU uh, to each user who is uh, connecting uh, to, to the platform. Um, distributed computing is another kind of uh, means of computation that you can use uh, for uh, for large computation tasks. Uh, if you need to do a global uh, study or a, a, a study that requires uh, analysis of uh, continental European data, uh, in that case, a single computer is not enough most of the time. So you need more resources. And this is mainly provided by using uh, computing clusters. So uh, multiple machines that are connected to each other. Uh, the idea was also to provide a distributed computing cluster ready to use to each user. Um, and of course, we had to provide all this at the low cost that is available. And that brought some limitations uh, to the platform. So um, before using it or while using it, uh, you should also know that we have, in fact, some, some limitations. The first one is limited performance. So basically, because we are trying to provide a lot of resources to a large group of people, uh, we had to choose um, a resources that provide a good performance at an affordable investment. So that's why uh, you, you won't find the fastest CPUs or the best GPUs that are available on the market, but you will have uh, decent resources which will allow you to the comp computation in a short time. Uh, the second limitation is a limited uh, customization. So uh, as I mentioned, the platform aims to provide ready-to-use software packages. So that means there are many that are already installed. 
and we also allow you to install additional packages, but unfortunately not everything can be customized. You cannot install all the packages that you want or there are some limitations due to the architectural uh, constraints. So um, this is also a limitation. Uh, there is a little overhead due to the web interface. So because you are connecting uh, to, to the platform through a web browser, uh, there might be some, some, some delays, uh, but this is really a quite minimum. Um, and the GPUs that we provide are also not the most powerful ones that are available on the market, but still very useful for, for many purposes, especially for self-learning and exploratory research. Uh, what we provide to you. Uh, so in order to be able to provide a, a GPU to each user um, and uh, provide also a computing cluster, we, we choose a partly innovative um, um, machine, uh, which is NVIDIA Jetson uh, Xavier. Uh, this is in fact a, a small microcomputer. So it, it, it is a cube of uh, 10 centimeter in dimension. It's very, very small. Uh, but it provides, uh, first of all, uh, eight uh, computation cores. So that means eight different uh, uh, computing units can compute uh, your task uh, with, with the same unit. Uh, it provides uh, a 515, uh, 512 uh, core GPU uh, with the Volta architecture. Uh, this is a, a architecture from NVIDIA and it is almost the latest one. So it allows you to use uh, state-of-the-art machine learning platforms and features. Uh, we are providing 32 gigabytes of memory with each unit and the units also have a uh, special deep learning and vision accelerators so if you want to do um, uh, image recognition or um, uh, machine learning you can use these uh, accelerators uh, for for computation purposes uh, we combined uh, 17 of these computing units so when you connect to the platform in fact uh, you connect one of these 17 units. Uh, but in addition to that, in fact, all 17 is also available as, as a cluster. So if you want, you can also use all of them. Uh, in addition to these uh, computing units, we have also a dedicated machine uh, for big data computing purposes. Uh, this is a single uh, server with uh, about 800 gigabytes of memory, uh, which is uh, quite, quite big and in fact uh, enough uh, to perform uh, continental and even global studies up to a certain level. Uh, in addition to that, we also provide uh, 24 terabytes of dedicated storage with this uh, computing machine. Um, and uh, it is in, in, in RAID formation, which means the disks are uh, plugged in parallel. And when you store a file, uh, that file is divided into different pieces and then distributed to all hard drives. So when you read something or when you write something, it happens very quickly. Uh, so this really facilitates uh, big data processing. In addition to this, we have also two servers uh, that are connected to the platform and hosting your needs. Uh, one server is in fact a shadow server. So basically if something happens to the main server, we can uh, very easily in short periods switch to, to, uh, to the second server and uh, continue uh, the service. Um, and in addition to this, we are also providing uh, 160 terabytes of external storage. Uh, and in total, uh, this brings uh, 0.2 petabyte uh, storage that is available for your purposes uh, without any limitations. Um, how, how this infrastructure is uh, organized? So basically, um, I, 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 want, uh, I, I wouldn't go into much details, but basically we have a single entry to the system, um, which is this, uh, this connection in fact, which goes to the main server. And then the main server distributes this request, your, your, your computation request to, to the available machines uh, through an internal network. And all, all the units are, are, are uh, connected to, to the UPS uh, units. So uh, if uh, there happens a short duration of cutoff electricity, we can recover um, and the system can continue uh, to, to pro process. Uh, several items of, of the infrastructure is in fact not uh, protected in this way, mainly this Synology uh, storage servers, and some of them are also not directly connected to the platform, but they are indirectly connected uh, to, through the uh, internet. Um, 
The platform is provided as a platform as a service. Uh, it is based on open source software, so um, we, we only use uh, open source solutions. Uh, it is accessible through a web browser. You don't need to install any software and you don't need to use a VPN connection as well. So uh, that means you can connect it uh, from anywhere, including your mobile phone if you want to. Uh, there is no uh, need for registration. Uh, you can log into the system uh, by using your UT credentials. Each user, when they connect to the platform, they have an individual and isolated working environment. So that means we have complete privacy. All the files that you store on the system belongs to you. Nobody else has access uh, to those files, and they also don't know what you do on the platform. Uh, at the same time, um, when you connect to the, to the platform, you also access all the resources that are available on the unit that you connect to without any limitations. So we give you all the available memory, we give you all the available local storage, and all the uh, GPU and uh, other resources that are available on the unit. Uh, at the same time, the complete cluster is also available for your purposes. So if you, if you can use distributed computing frameworks, then in fact you can use also the, the cluster as a whole. Um, any file that you store on the, on the platform is replicated uh, physically on two different, uh, at least on two different uh, hard drives. Uh, that means if something happens to, to one hard drive that holds, holds your file, uh, the second will, uh, will, will be utilized as, as the backup copy. Uh, this doesn't mean that we provide a backup service. So basically, if uh, on purpose you delete a file or by mistake you delete a file, uh, you delete a file. It is not possible to recover. But if something happens at hardware level, we will provide a second copy for you. Um, the system automatically scales uh, and balances the workload. So depending on the number of users, uh, it is automatically distributing the workload uh, to, to different units. And we have also uh, a, a very low energy consumption because these, these small units, in fact, utilize a very little uh, energy for, for the computation. Um, the key features of the platform. Um, we are uh, providing an interactive uh, notebook uh, access. Uh, we are providing a terminal access uh, to use the shell scripts. And we provide also a remote desktop connection uh, through which you can use uh, typical desktop applications. Uh, we are supporting uh, multiple interactive languages. So basically, uh, these kind of platforms, um, uh, there are several examples like uh, Google Colab, uh, they provide usually uh, one or two languages as interactive notebook, which are typically Python uh, or R. Uh, in our case, we are providing uh, in total 15 different languages like Julia, Octave, Go, uh, which can be useful also for different type of uh, computation needs. Uh, all the software packages that are available on the platform are up to date, and if possible, they are in the, their latest versions, uh, which means we follow a rolling release um, method. Uh, we all, always keep the software up to date. We don't stick a specific version. Uh, and they are all ready to use. You don't need to do any uh, setup by yourself. If you want, however, you can install additional packages and uh, later in the presentation, I will show you uh, how to do that. Um, we have a public assets uh, section uh, in the platform, uh, which is shared by all the users. For the time being, this public assets part is focusing on geospatial data sets. Uh, for example, we have the complete open street map data the planet data set, which is a 100 gigabyte uh, data set, and we are keeping it up to date each week. So if you need to do a kind of analysis by using OpenStreetMap data, you don't need to download data because it is already available there. And uh, if you have a need for this kind of data sets, we can download it for you and we can make it available on the platform. Uh, in addition to that, we have also shared workspaces. Uh, shared workspaces are, are special folders uh, to which uh, you designate uh, whom uh, can access and how they can access. So you can indicate, OK, I want a shared workspace for my course. Uh, me and two other instructors 
they need to access the workspace um, without any limitations. So we want to put the course material, we want to update the course material, delete the files, etc. And we have a group of students who, who need to access this workspace just to access the files without changing them. This is possible on the platform. We can also grant access to external users. So if you if you have collaborators from um, uh, outside UT, from different universities in Netherlands or uh, even uh, abroad, it is possible uh, to request uh, access also for uh, for those people, and we can create the accounts uh, for them. We are providing uh, limited uh, technical and user support. So uh, if you encounter any uh, issues uh, on the platform, if you have difficulties in doing a kind of uh, computational analysis, uh, you can always contact us and we can help you with that. Um, and the platform is in fact uh, provided and maintained by CRIP and provided as, as a platform as a service at no extra cost. So uh, you can use it uh, for free uh, for, uh, for your purposes. Uh, what is the current state of the platform? Um, it is operational since January uh, this year. Uh, so last week we passed uh, 300 registered users limit. So uh, in fact, uh, as of today, we have uh, 314. Uh, usually there are 5 to 20 concurrent users uh, using the uh, platform at the same time. And because we have 17 units, that means uh, some of them are already sharing the resources. But so far, the performance uh, is, is good. And we have provided uh, approximately 20,000 hours of uh, computation time uh, for different needs uh, with a, a pos positive feedback uh, so far with a wide range of use cases, which includes the thesis, studies, courses, etc. And in fact, uh, we have several courses who started to use the platform. We have several uh, research projects who are using the platform or willing to use the platform. And in fact, there are also project proposals that consider to utilize the platform for their needs. There is some interest from different UT units like DCC, BDSI. They are interested to have a similar platforms. And in fact, Lisa uh, recently decided to build a similar platform for UT wide use, um, um, which is very good news because basically with this platform, uh, there will be a more uh, powerful uh, computing units available for your computation needs including more powerful GPUs. Um, that, uh, I know that there are people from Lisa uh, here uh, as participants. Please feel free to provide more information on the chat. Uh, but hopefully in a couple of months, we will have a similar uh, platform available uh, for much wider use. And in fact, we are also helping uh, for the code development. Uh, how do you access uh, to, to the platform? Uh, it is very easy. You just go to HTTPS uh, website uh, and there you will find the login um, a link which brings you uh, to a simple login screen. Uh, in fact, this login screen is linked to, uh, to the authentication system of University of Twente. So um, uh, anybody who is from UT uh, uh, registers through that system. And that means the platform itself does not store your password. So we don't have any access to your uh, private uh, information from, from, from that point. Um, only for external users, we are keeping this information on the system. Um, once you are authenticated, um, uh, the, the platform automatically creates a kind of virtual machine for you, which includes all the uh, computing environment that is provided. Uh, how we do that? So uh, I will briefly explain that to you because uh, th there are some important information which might be useful uh, when you use the platform. Um, and I will start with a disclaimer. So uh, basically, uh, there are some co complex technologies that are involved, and I will simplify. I, I will simplify them while uh, explaining. So uh, sometimes, uh, when I say something, it won't be 100% accurate. So, for example, if I say GPUs are not shareable, so that's why we. We, we, we bring one, one GPU to, to each user uh, is not completely true. So there are some recent developments which allow GPUs to be shared, uh, but for practical um, means, in fact, uh, it is not possible on our platform. So I will tell you it is not shareable. So uh, and it will be also like uh, the case when I explain Docker and related technologies. Um, so uh, Docker uh, is a kind of virtualization uh, method. 
uh, which which uh, is at the operating level system level. So that means it doesn't uh, emulate a virtual machine, but it allows you to create a kind of virtual machines on top of the operating system. Uh, so uh, and it allows uh, different software packages to be bundled together with the libraries and uh, additional configuration files in an isolated way, which can communicate to each other if necessary and run on, on that unit. So that means uh, when you connect to, to the platform, in fact, uh, you, you have your own container uh, running uh, one of the machines available on the platform. Uh, we don't know which one, you don't know which one. It is automatically uh, assigned and uh, managed by the system. Um, how does this work? Uh, for that purpose, we are using a technology which is called Docker Swarm. Uh, Docker Swarm automatically does this, uh, this alignment of, of the available containers. And in fact, uh, this is partly the structure that we have. So we have the Jetson units at, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the bottom. So that is the physical unit that we have which has a operating system. In, in that case, this is uh, NVIDIA uh, Linux for Tegra, which is a, a custom version of uh, Ubuntu 18.4 uh, uh, that is specifically designed for these uh, special units. Uh, we have the Docker running on top of the operating system, and then we have containers working on, on top of it. When you connect to the system, in fact, a JupyterLab container is, is spawned for you, and you start to use, use this. Um, that is about 20 uh, gigabyte size uh, large image. Uh, so, and basically that is the reason why you connect to the platform. It takes a couple of seconds uh, for you to, to reach uh, the, the JupyterLab interface because the system needs to load all these 20 gigabytes of, of data and, and uh, run uh, the initial tasks. Um, so whenever somebody else connects, additional JupyterLab containers created. Um, how containers works uh, is partly important. So you can consider these uh, containers um, as, as um, pictures in a drawing book. So in fact, each picture is, is the image itself. And once a container is spawned, you start to, to it, it is converted uh, to alive and it, it is possible to, to paint it uh, as, 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 as you like. So you, you, can, you can install additional things, you can do the computation, and while doing the computation, you can create a temporary files, etc. So uh, this becomes the actual uh, drawing. And while uh, creating this uh, template, in fact, uh, a certain part is marked as cut here. So that means anything on the right-hand side of the cut line belongs to you, and it will kept for you. So if anything that you draw there, so that means anything that you put there uh, is permanent. If you log out from the system, um, anything on the left part of the cut line uh, gets lost completely. So uh, basically they are cleaned. And when you reconnect the next time, you start with a blank image from there. But all the files that you have on the right hand side uh, already connected and in place for you. So that means uh, you need to store your files while using the platform at sort certain locations. Uh, and we, in fact, we have five different important locations that you need to know while using the, the system. The first one is your home directory. So um, to which you have full access. And this home directory is also utilized by the system. So some of the packages that you use may put some files like configuration files or some uh, temporary files under your home directory, so it's not completely uh, under your control. Um, and it is accessible through uh, home uh, slash Jovian or uh, tilde directory. The second directory that is linked to you is your private directory for which you have full access. It is available under data slash private and it is also linked to your home directory under the private subfolder. Uh, the main difference uh, between these two directories, uh, they are stored in the same place, but in one case, you are the, the only owner. That means the system is not using it. It will, it will not create any temporary files. It will be completely clean. It will be only your files. So if you, if you put the files there, 
if you take the backup, you only back up your, your own files. So this is more, more convenient than having a, a crowded home directory. So my suggestion uh, is to put your own assets under the private directory as much as you can. The third directory is the public directory. This is a read-only directory which is maintained by us. So here we are providing all these public data sets. But in addition to that, we are also providing information about the platform, about the updates, uh, about the versions of the packages that are available, etc. So I will show them at a later stage. Um, but it is a very useful um, directory, which also includes uh, some books which you can follow uh, to, to learn more about uh, interactive computing. Uh, specific to uh, the big data unit, if you connect to the big data unit, you will also have access to additional directory, uh, which is unfortunately written wrong here, but it should be a data local. Uh, so it's a local directory. Uh, it is also a private directory, which only belongs to you. Uh, and any file that you store there is stored in this 24 terabyte uh, fast hard drive array. So uh, if you need to process big data, please put your files uh, under the local directory and use the PowerEdge uh, big data server. Um, the shared directories that you have are listed under data shared uh, slash the subdirectory name. You may have multiple shared folders if you are uh, attending uh, or if you are uh, providing uh, training for two different courses, you can have two different course folders, uh, one for, for another project. And sometimes uh, for, for a project, we can provide a full access folder. And in addition to that, a second one, read-only, which you can use depending on, on the needs. So all those folders are listed under a shared directory. One important folder, uh, which is uh, outside this, um, that means it is a system folder. It gets deleted each time you, you connect to the system, is the temp directory. Um, this is important, um, although it is not permanent, because it's a local folder, uh, it is very fast. Uh, and that is the main difference between the data folders that you have and the folders that belongs to the system. So the folders that you have, because we need to keep them permanent, they are in fact shared through the network. So we have the storage server, and, and the, your computation unit gets connected to the storage unit through the network to, to store the files and to retrieve the files. And, and this brings a performance penalty. Whereas if you use uh, the, the local folder in case of PowerEdge, or if you use the temporary folder in case of the other computation units, you, you use the local storage that is available on the unit, and that is about 10 times faster than the, the network share. So my suggestion is to use this temporary folder whenever you need to keep intermediate files uh, during computation. Um, what are the means to, to access uh, the platform? The first one is interactive access through Jupyter Lab. Uh, Jupyter notebooks are uh, interactive notebooks which are uh, quite common um, for um, interactive computing purposes. Uh, they are language agnostic, so uh, it is not specific to Python, it's not specific to R. Uh, it can be used for many languages. The nice thing about interactive notebooks is that it combines a language like Python R with a, a markup language. In this case, it's called Markdown, which you can use uh, for, for documentation. So it is like a, a typing in Word, so you can, you can format uh, different parts of the text. You can put headers, you can put links, uh, you can also even embed uh, some, some images. So you can use it to document um, the, the, the computation that you do. Then you have cells with, with code which you run um, and the output is shown just below the cell in the same environment. So it is very useful to combine actually a computation workflow. And the good thing about JupyterLab, it is also uh, provides multiple windows, so you can tie the windows next to each other. At one side, you can read uh, a wiki page or um, a, a, a living textbook uh, content which explains the topic, and uh, on the other uh, side, you can do uh, the, the exercise and do the computation. So I will provide a bit more information about 
Jupyter Lab later. Uh, the second access uh, is the terminal. So uh, the terminal access allows you uh, to run shell scripts. So uh, in fact, uh, the system is a Ubuntu system, so it's a Linux system. So any uh, text mod application that runs on Linux uh, can be run uh, through this, uh, this shell. Um, I provided a link for you uh, for, uh, for a tutorial for the beginners, uh, which you can have a look if you are new to this. Uh, but it, it is helped you uh, especially to automate some tasks. So if you need to download a file, you can very easily use the terminal to download the file. Uh, and the last access uh, that we provide is the remote desktop connection. So the remote desktop connection allows you to use uh, desktop applications, uh, Unix based desktop applications. Uh, we are providing a, a XFC desktop environment which is uh, quite similar to, for example, Windows, if you are using the Windows. So the logic is the same. You have a start menu and uh, the, from the menu you can launch the applications and the applications uh, have all the usual user interface elements like the buttons, windows, etc. Uh, here we are providing a, a selection of um, um, especially GIS and remote sensing related applications. But there are also applications like uh, R Studio, for example, which is a complete interactive development environment uh, for, for R. This is also uh, possible to, to use. Um, in addition to this, uh, basically the platform uh, provides, uh, as I mentioned, ready to use software. And in fact, we are providing hundreds of them. So we have more than 500 uh, Python packages. We have more than 300 R packages. Uh, you can use the system uh, to do scientific computing, uh, to do statistical analysis uh, for uh, image analysis, machine learning, deep learning, GPU enabled deep learning, and geospatial analysis, and GPU enabled geospatial analysis. So these are all, all possible um, on the platform. In addition to that, we are also providing some additional services. Um, usually, um, the computing environment helps you uh, to do the computation, but in fact, you may need to store your data in a structured way, uh, not as files, but in, in a database. Or uh, if the end product of your computation uh, is some geospatial files like maps, in that case, it could be better to store them not as uh, separate files, but in a map server so that uh, you can share it with outside easily or you can access it uh, from, from different applications easily through web services. Uh, considering that, we also provided some additional services. The first one is a geo server. A uh, geo server is to, uh, to serve uh, map files, vector and raster data sets. Um, it is available at two different uh, addresses. The first one, the first column that you see is the internal address. So while using the interactive notebooks, if you use a, a Python script or R script, which needs to connect these services, you need to use the address that is provided in the first column. If you need to access those resources from outside, uh, some of them are also open to outside, so you can uh, use the link that is provided to access them um, externally, which in this case, uh, for example, for, for GeoServer, uh, crypt.ut20.nl slash GeoServer. Uh, as database, we are providing two different databases. One is PostgreSQL. Uh, PostgreSQL also supports uh, PostGIS and PG routing, so it is a uh, geospatial analysis enabled. Um, in order to access PostgreSQL, we are providing PG admin interface. So that is a web-based interface uh, which facilitates uh, query uh, and visualization of, 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 of the data. You can also use it to, to manage data, in fact, uh, and it is also available externally. Uh, the database itself, uh, due to security reasons, uh, not, is not directly accessible from outside. We are enabling this access only uh, for selected databases uh, and for selected use cases. So, but it is possible. So you just need to contact us, indicate which database needs to be accessed from outside, and we will enable this access for you. Uh, this is also the same uh, for MariaDB. Uh, MariaDB is a, a free, more free, uh, let's say, version of uh, MySQL uh, database, which is also quite common, uh, especially for, for web applications. 
we have also a MariaDB uh, server that is running, and you can you can use it on the platform uh, to share the code that you develop. We are providing a code repository which is called a Gitea. So it is a Git uh, based repository. So it is compatible with a Git uh, system. So uh, you you can you can use Gitea like you use, for example, GitLab or GitHub. Um, a, a good use case of Gitea in, in our uh, on our platform could be uh, to learn it and uh, to to use it to, to 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 teaching purposes because normally you can ask your students to create um, GitHub repositories, uh, but in fact because they are for learning purposes they are uh, they are not actual repositories they are, they are just for to to play with. Uh, so in that case, you can use the local installation that we have. And at the end of the course, you, you can just tell, tell us to, to remove the repositories and we can do the, all the cleanup for you. So uh, it is really uh, quite convenient uh, for this kind of use cases. Uh, and the last service that we provide is Geonode. Uh, Geonode is, is, uh, is a content management uh, system for geospatial data. So in fact, it's a combination of GeoServer, um, PostgreSQL and uh, a, a mapping uh, interface. And uh, an instance is also available on the platform. Um, um, and you can access it uh, through the indicated uh, links. Um, so far, these are the services that we have and the, that, uh, the capabilities that we have. Uh, any questions so far? Maybe it is a good time to, to ask if you have any questions. I will uh, try to also look at the chat window. Uh, Emils, can you help me uh, if there are any questions that I can answer? Uh, I think I, I answered most of uh, the ones that were asked. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps you could improve the ans uh, answers. I was wondering, you mentioned that the, the temporary folder. Uh, yes. Like, uh, at the root of the file system. Do you suggest putting file files there? Because... Uh, yes. Uh, no, I don't suggest uh, files uh, to be stored under a temp directory because it is really temporary. So when you log yeah. out the system, it is it is gone. So uh, you, what you can do, one option, um, but the, uh, I think probably you won't need it. But in any case, uh, if you really need to uh, have maximum performance, let's say if you have uh, many files which you need to access during the computation period uh, continuously, uh, at, at the beginning of the computation, you can put your files to, to that temporary folder, do all the computation there, and then uh, the results you can put back to your private directory. I think that is a good way to go. But in sometimes, some of the computation uh, software applications or libraries that you utilize may ask you uh, in their configuration where to store the temporary files. So in that case, please indicate this temporary folder because it will provide you the best performance. And if the default is a pad that is under your home directory, um, know that it will work uh, 10 times slower than the temporary file. Yeah, all right. That's, yes. Uh, that's good to know. I think it, it, it would be useful for some people to, to clarify this. Uh... Yes. Uh, OK, so uh, let me yeah. continue with the, pre with the presentation. Um, the performance. So uh, here you can see the, the benchmark, uh, the CPU benchmark uh, of the units that we have on the platform. So this only measures the CPU, so the GP computation is not included, uh, but it's a nice benchmark including different use cases, uh, which includes also database access, some scientific computation, physics computation, machine learning, uh, motion detection, and that kind of things. Uh, as you can see, uh, the Jetson uh, machines that we, that we provide uh, are almost the same level with the server machines that we have. So they are around um, uh, close to 600 single core score, which means if the computation is done only by using a single core, uh, they provide a 600 uh, unit of computation, let's say. But if you utilize multi-core, this becomes 4,000. So uh, considering that we have eight cores available uh, on the unit, actually these eight cores really perform as expected and provides that, that value. Uh, the big data computing machine, um, because it is it is a much more stronger server, so it's not like a micro uh, computer, but a, a proper a large server machine. It provides a two times um, better, almost a single core, 
and uh, 2.5 times uh, better multi-core uh, computation. So uh, that means if your computation doesn't require uh, GPUs, uh, then I suggest you to use, in fact, the big data computing unit because it will provide you the best performance. Having said that, uh, also I should I should um, indicate that in most cases uh, you won't uh, understand the difference uh, unless you do the computation which takes a lot of time. So partly if you do a, a computation which, which takes a couple of seconds, 10, 15 seconds, the difference is really not very much important. But if you need to do a computation which takes uh, several days, then it may really make the difference. But in that case, probably what you need is in fact a GPU in enabled computation. And in that case, you should choose the Jetsons. Um, just for comparison, I also provided the, the performance of Mac Mini M1, which is also connected in fact to the platform, but it is, is separated. So it is uh, dedicated to, uh, uh, to a certain uh, re research group. Uh, uh, as you can see, uh, with Mac Mini, you can have a significantly um, better single core performance uh, because it is one of the uh, fastest uh, single core CPUs that are available in the market. So it is really fast from that point of view. And it also provides a good uh, multi-core uh, computation, um, which could be a good choice. So if in the future uh, we, we, we may also include those machines to the platform, and if you will be able to choose them, you should choose uh, this kind of machines if you if your processing is is single core. So that means it doesn't use any uh, multi-threading uh, libraries. Uh, if it is, for example, a, a, a code that is written only in Python, in that case, this kind of machines can be a good choice for you. Um, yes. Um, an additional information, if you look what is the top performance that is available in the market, uh, in the market, uh, the best CPUs nowadays provide around 25,000 um, multi-core score. Um, but in this case, I, I should tell you this, this CPU just by itself uh, is more than 4,000 euros. Uh, and it needs to be also supported with a proper machine. So basically, uh, this kind of machines, uh, they, they require uh, almost 10,000 euros uh, to, to provide. And uh, with that money, we are almost providing the platform. Um, these are the features that we had. Uh, so um, uh, I have a frequently asked questions section, which talks about uh, uh, how to upload files uh, to, to, to the platform, how to access files that are stored on the platform, how to install additional packages, how to install additional software applications, how to install Windows applications, and uh, whether you can run multiple instances uh, at the same time. Uh, I will come back to them, but before that, maybe I can give a short demonstration uh, of the platform so that uh, for, for the, for, for the uh, people who will start to use it, uh, you, will, you, will, you will see how it works. So, uh, as I mentioned during the presentation, in order to access the platform, you just need to go to uh, clip.u20.nl and here on the portal, you will find uh, similar information that I have provided so far, a little bit more uh, summarized uh, version. Uh, you just click the login uh, button and then you reach the sign in window. Here you sign in with your UT credentials. This login uh, uh, page, we are using it also to communicate some inform important information to you. For example, here you see the announcement of the training and you also link the announcement for our short user survey, um, which I ask uh, for, for, for the people who are using the platform for a while, please uh, help us to improve it by filling this, this survey. It's really short. It will take not, not more than five minutes. Um, but uh, we will have also additional announcements. Uh, for example, if we need to maintain the system and if we need to uh, shut down it for, for a short duration, then you will get the announcement also on this screen. In addition to that, uh, when we will have a maintenance, we will also send emails to you 20 hour, 24 hours before the maintenance. And all uh, users that are connected uh, to the platform at 12 hours before the maintenance, they will get a specific notification as well, uh, directly to their email addresses. 
So once you uh, log in the system, uh, the system will provide you uh, different options to choose. And these options include the Jetson units and the big data computing unit and one of the server machines. And th the resources that you will get are here indicated, so you can choose based on that. Uh, as I mentioned, we don't put any limitations to the resources that you have. Once you connect to the platform and once you connect to, 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 to a unit, uh, all the resources that are available on the unit will be available to you. Uh, the thing is, because we have a limited number of units, uh, if the number of users passes the number of available units, then uh, the users will start to share the resources. And for resource sharing, we also don't have uh, fixed rules. Uh, so uh, if a connected user, the first connected user ju just use uh, the system for basic computation, which doesn't take too much memory or computation, then all the rest, all the memory that is available will be provided uh, to the second user. Um, when you log into the system, this is the basic interface that you will see, uh, uh, which is JupyterLab. Uh, basically, uh, JupyterLab, it is possible to install also to your own laptop. So if you visit the JupyterLab uh, website, if you download uh, the software, you can also install and have the identical interface on your laptop. And in fact, you can also use your laptop for computation purposes. But the benefits of the platform is, first of all, the platform uh, provides you uh, most probably better computational resources with GPUs or very large memory that is available for computation. It, it allows you to store your files in a safe manner, so you don't need to think about uh, backing them up. Um, and uh, it also allows you to collaborate. So by using these shared workspaces, in fact, you, 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 can, you can work on the same project with uh, multiple people very easily. Um, the JupyterLab interface has a, a sidebar, uh, and on the left uh, side, uh, this is the file browser. So uh, the root uh, of your file, file browser is in fact your home directory, the, the home directory that I mentioned. And the other directories, which I mentioned during the presentation, for example, the public, a pr private and shared, are in fact uh, are accessible directly from, from here. Uh, any file you store uh, under your home directory belongs to you. Nobody else see that information. And you can open files just by clicking uh, the file. Uh, depending on the file type, uh, the system automatically uh, opens an uh, interactive uh, interface. In this case, this is an interactive notebook written in Python, so it starts a Python kernel and uh, allows you to, to run the computation. But sometimes, if it is, for example, a, an image that you click, then it only displays the image. Uh, there are also different ways to, to open uh, a file. So, for example, under the public uh, folder, you will see a readme file uh, with MD extension. MD means Markdown, and Markdown is the default markup language used by JupyterLab. If you click it, if you double click it to open, it opens in editing mode. But if you right click and then choose open with Markdown preview, in fact, you see, you see it uh, as, uh, as, as formatted. Basically, uh, this is in fact uh, how you how you see it when you use an interactive notebook. Um, Tiling the windows is very easy. You just take take one tap, and if you move, you can you can you can put to any location that you want. So this allows you to uh, to design your your workspace uh, as needed. So one part could be a view, and another part uh, could be in fact uh, the computation. And these are linked to each other. So anything that you that you write is automatically updated uh, in, in the other view if it is the same file, which is quite handy. So if you write the documentation, you can write the documentation and you can see exactly how it will look at the same time. Um, under the public directory, uh, basically we have the, the common data sets that I mentioned. For example, this OpenStreetMap uh, folder uh, contains the OpenStreetMap data, and we have also other data sources that are available. Uh, under the resources folder, you will find a useful uh, Python data science handbook. Uh, this handbook itself is written as interactive notebooks. 
So um, you just uh, open a file, and once you open a file, in fact, you can read all the content, you can see the code, and in fact, you can also run the code. So um, the, the code cells can be run with click, clicking shift enter. So if you click shift enter, in fact, the system starts to running and it displays the outputs uh, of this uh, code cell. Uh, they are linked to each other. So anything that is computed in the previous step is in fact um, transferred to, to the next cell. So they work in a continuous manner. One important uh, folder under public is the platform. So here under the platform, you will find useful information um, about the platform, which includes, for example, the packages that are installed um, on, on the system. You can see uh, all, all the packages and their versions. Uh, this is also the same uh, for uh, Python packages. So basically, you can see uh, which Python packages are installed, what are the versions, their short description and links to their uh, websites. Uh, here you can check if you need a specific library for computation, please check it here first for, for its availability. And if not, you can always ask us or you can try to install also uh, by yourself. Uh, one important information, there are some packages that are not supported and these are indicated under this unsupported Python packages part. Uh, and we provide also the reason why it is not, uh, not supported. It is also the same for uh, unsupported software. Um, you can follow the progress of the of the platform if you want through this what's new part. Uh, so here we put a summary of, of the latest action that we perform uh, on the platform. And there is also a work in progress section where we, you can see uh, what we are working on right now. Um, some benchmark information is available under benchmark folder. Uh, the configuration of all uh, the packages that are compiled on the platform are, are listed here. So basically, for example, in case of Octal, uh, you can see uh, which libraries are, are enabled. And even we also provide a complete a build log uh, for the packages so that you can check if necessary. Uh, there is a short demo folder which uh, holds uh, uh, the, some basic uh, demonstration files. And uh, for, for, for the new people, let me just start with that demonstration. It will also show you uh, basically how, how, how the system works. So um, um, as I mentioned, the interactive notebooks uh, allows you to combine the documentation. The documentation is normally written in Markdown. So and each cell, it, the type of the cell can be selected here from, from the menu. So if you turn into code, uh, you see uh, the markdown code that you enter. And if you uh, click a shift enter, in fact, the system tries to run uh, it as a code, uh, which is in this case a Python code. But because it's not valid, it gives an error. So what you should do is to change it, change this to, to markdown. And if you, in this case, shift enter, it will convert uh, this, this markdown code uh, to, uh, to its formatted uh, way. Um, I will provide a link uh, to a markdown a reference uh, which you can you can follow uh, to to learn how to write basic text by using markdown. Um, the code running part is also quite simple. You just need to write a valid uh, a code segment uh, in the indicated language. So in this case it is Python and we, if you just write print hello world, in fact the system will print hello world. Um, it is easy uh, to uh, to use existing uh, libraries. Let me clear the output first. Um, normally, um, you need to install all these uh, packages, for example, matplotlib or sklearn. And to do the analysis, but because we already provide them on the platform, you just uh, start uh, coding immediately. In this example, we are doing a very basic statistical uh, computation. We are loading a data set. Uh, we are doing a principal component analysis, and then we are uh, we are we are putting the output uh, as as a graph. 
Um, this graph you can copy paste and you can use it in, in your report, in your publication uh, very easily. Um, because the system is inter interactive, in fact, uh, the, the graphics or the outputs, they don't need to be static images. So it is also possible to use um, interactive widgets. And in this case, I will demonstrate an interactive uh, chart. Uh, this chart is looks like a normal sine curve, uh, but in fact, uh, it is interactive and the system uh, allows us to indicate the parameters. So basically we can we can change um, the, the, the parameters uh, of the graph. Uh, we can change the type of the graph. If you want, we can zoom in to a certain part and see it in, in detail. Uh, this gives a nice uh, flexibility in the computation. So basically, if you uh, if you develop a, a model which can be customized by the by the users, uh, you can very easily indicate the parameters, put them as interactive widgets in your notebook, and uh, then the users uh, who use the notebook will be able to to change the parameters. The good thing about the notebooks is uh, they are very easy to to share with the others. So all you need to do is to right click and then click download. In that case, the system will give you uh, the file. Which you can save in your local machine. You can send it by through email or you can you can put it somewhere on, on the web, which people can 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 download and also load in their own uh, platform or working environment uh, and they can run the notebooks also there very easily. Um, the support also includes geospatial data, so uh, it is it is possible to to use just uh, two lines of code uh, to load a large geospatial data set and uh, a, you can put a base map uh, below the map to to provide a better visualization uh, for for your data. Uh, moreover, uh, the maps can be also interactive, so basically it is possible to use interactive mapping widgets. In that case, you can put your data and uh, the user can zoom in, zoom out, uh, look for, for different locations. Um, it is also possible to do uh, geospatial uh, analysis, so you can open uh, aerial Im imagery, you can do the histogram analysis, and in fact, you can also merge um, multiple images uh, to, to a single image. Uh, these examples were uh, in, in Python, but if you are using R, in fact, for computation, that is also uh, supported completely. You can enter your, your R code, you can get your R uh, uh, charts um, and you can use it uh, like you use on your um, on your own machine. And another feature that we provide uh, is in fact uh, uh, distributed computing. So uh, here uh, again on the left hand side, uh, you will see uh, several uh, icons and uh, the second one uh, shows you uh, the open uh, the open kernels that are running now and in fact each notebook uh, is linked to, to a kernel uh, that is running. So uh, here I have many tabs and each tab corresponds to a kernel here. You can close them, you can shut them down if it is not necessary. And uh, the third one is, is the Dusk um, uh, interface and Dusk is a framework for distributed computing. So uh, basically, uh, with, with, with Task, uh, basically it is possible to uh, to, to utilize uh, distributed computing functionality uh, available uh, on, on the platform. Uh, let me just enable this. Mm, okay. Uh, I didn't test this before before the presentation. It looks like we have a mismatch. Okay, uh, this I will uh, show you uh, another time. But basically, a uh, task allows you to use the whole um, um, cluster uh, all all together. So all the units. Uh, if you use a, a task enabled a library for computation, here for example, in this case. Uh, we are creating a large matrix, which is 25,000 to 25,000 in size, which is about five gigabytes. Um, and we do a basic computation on, on, on this uh, matrix. Uh, and in fact, when you start the computation, 
uh, the computation not only uh, done on the unit that you are connected, but it is a uh, it is all the units that are available on the platform are utilized for this purpose. Um, uh, unfortunately, I cannot demonstrate it right now, but uh, I will provide you later uh, a short video and also uh, a proper working uh, version that you can you can you can check. Um, these are uh, the interactive uh, notebook parts. Uh, in addition to that, one uh, important feature that we have is the remote desktop connection. So uh, you just uh, go to the launcher and from the launcher you choose the remote desktop. Uh, and then uh, the system uh, creates a XFCE a desktop environment for you in the same machine uh, that you, you utilize, which means uh, all the files that you have here on your home folder are in fact also accessible uh, on the uh, uh, remote desktop uh, section. I think we have uh, many users connected to the platform, so it slows down a little bit. Meanwhile, uh, I can I can I can ask you if you have any any questions. Yeah, again, I think uh, I have uh, answered them. Uh, yes, mostly answered. Well, not mostly. Okay. Yeah. This I will try again. Yeah, during the last training, we also had some issues. Uh, well, uh, we have 17 machines, and if the number of connected users uh, becomes more than 50, which I believe is around 60 now, uh, it slows down. Uh, meanwhile, maybe I can I can uh, go back to frequent asking questions and uh, try to answer some of them, which can be also useful for uh, for the new users because it will provide you a little bit more information. Um, the first question is how to upload files to the platform, um, which is very easy. You just use the upload button, which is uh, just below the main menu. This this icon with the uh, up arrow. And once you click it, uh, it will open a standard upload window from which you can uh, choose multiple files. Uh, the files that you select are uploaded to the active folder uh, that is active in the file browser. And uh, a file upload is uh, quite fast. So if the data that you want to upload is, is large, which means uh, more than 10, 10 megabytes, then the system will, will give you uh, a, a, a warning. Uh, but this is just to indicate that you are trying to upload something big, but we don't have any limitations with the big data sets. And uh, I have uploaded uh, files with uh, several gigabytes in size. Uh, and usually it takes around one minute to upload a one gigabyte file uh, to the platform. One limitation that we have, uh, you cannot upload directories. Unfortunately, that is not supported. So let's say you have a directory under which you have many files and some subdirectories. In that case, the easiest way to upload this is to create an archive file of the directory. So you just use a, a archive, archive manager to create a zip file, or if you are using a Linux, it can be a tar, tar G, GZ file, and then upload this single archive file to the platform and then extract it on the platform. Uh, there are two options available. One is you can use the terminal, and on the terminal you can, you can enter unzip uh, the archive name command, uh, to, to unzip the archive. Um, or the second option is to, to use the remote desktop. In that case, um, you, you, you can the applications that are available, and one of the application is in fact a archive manager. And by using the archive manager, you can very easily select the archive and extract it to, to anywhere uh, that you want. Uh, we will provide the better options also soon in the coming months. Um, by the time, by the way, uh, the platform is available since January, as I mentioned before. And for the six months, the six months period, we consider it as a, as a, a development period. And uh, we are also learning uh, during that period. We are trying new things. Um, and uh, partly there might be some, some delays or some lack, uh, lacking features, but they will be available soon. Uh, so uh, if you need something, uh, just, just let us know. Um, the second question that is linked to this is how to access the files on the platform. Um, you can access the files by uh, using only the platform. So that means the interface that we provide. 
uh, currently it is not possible to share th those files. So it is not like uh, you can have a link which you can share with the others and the others can access the same file by using that link. Unfunction unfortunately, the functionality uh, is not available, but we will provide uh, that functionality soon uh, by linking a, a data uh, data serving uh, uh, component like Nextcloud or OwnCloud uh, that is linked to your uh, uh, folder. So when you uh, use this system, it will be possible to share also data to outside. Um, if you need, however, some uh, specific needs like a, a special type of data that needs to be shared uh, within UT uh, to, to selected people, uh, for example, uh, accessing from, 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 from a department, then we can arrange uh, this kind of uh, data access for you. Another question is how to install our Python Julia uh, similar uh, packages, which you may need. Um, the way for Python uh, is to use the pip um, package manager. So you open a terminal and then enter pip install the package name. Uh, or if you want a specific version of the package, you just uh, choose pip install package name is a double equal the version. For R, you can use the install packages command in R. So you can use uh, use it in an interactive notebook or you can you can also uh, open a terminal and uh, run the R command there, uh, which basically asks the package name and a repository to, to download the package. Uh, my suggestion is to use uh, the R project repository, uh, which is with the indicated URL, but uh, if you prefer others, of course, you can also uh, use the repositories that you want. Uh, for other languages, please refer to the user documentation. So uh, partly package management uh, is really depending uh, on, uh, on the language. Uh, you may need to use uh, different tools. Uh, so, and they are all indicated doc documentation. Uh, so second, sorry, uh, there, there's a question. People uh, are asking whether you could share the frequently asked questions slides. I thought they yes. might be in the platform already available. Uh, so I, I guess it would be I a good send, idea. To I, will send, I will send the presentation to all participants so you will get, get them, but they will be also available on the platform. So uh, yeah, yeah we, will, we will send them. All right. Uh, awesome. OK, the packages are installed on your home directory. So this is the important information. So if you if you use those pa package managers to install the packages, they are installed uh, to your home folder. So that means they are permanent. You don't need to install them uh, each time. Just one is enough. But that means they are not updated automatically. So they are outside our um, platform image. So uh, we don't know exactly what kind of packages you install, so we cannot update them automatically for you. So you have to do it by yourself. This is your responsibility. Um, one thing that you may encounter while installing the packages, you may see some errors, and the errors might be due to missing system libraries. So for example, if the package is doing a certain kind of computation, but for that computation, if it needs a, a specific package that is already installed on the system that may become a problem or sometimes the package uh, might be architecture dependent so it may work only on intel machines or it may work only on arm machines or it may require a gpu uh, that is available so if you encounter such problems please just contact us uh, we will install the package for you and when we install the package for you in fact uh, it will also become uh, platform-wide available. So that means other users will be able to use uh, the package as well. Uh, I have two warnings uh, regarding the local packages. The first one, uh, local package dependencies are not guaranteed for platform updates. So uh, as I mentioned before, the platform has a rolling release uh, mechanism. We are always updating the packages uh, as much as possible to the latest versions. So we don't guarantee a certain version of the package that is installed on the platform. If the local package that you install depends on a certain version, and uh, then uh, it may create a problem at a later stage. You should be careful with that. The second one, uh, the local packages are architecture dependent. So that means if you choose a Jetson unit, and then install a package by using the Jetson unit, your home folder will include ARM-based packages. Whereas if you choose uh, the big data computing machine and install packages 
by using that machine, the packages that you install will be Intel based. So that means if somehow you switch the machines and if you try to use the package that you install on one uh, computer uh, on the other unit, they won't work. This is unfortunately a limitation and there are some solutions that we think of uh, about that and hopefully in the future we will do a automatic switching of, of the packages for you. So whenever you install a package, uh, in fact it will be uh, recorded for which unit you install and uh, it will be made available only if you connect through through that unit. But uh, this is a feature that we are working on and it will be available in the in the future, not now. Um, Conda is not supported. Uh, this is something I should tell you because Conda is quite common um, uh, also for scientific work as a package manager, uh, but unfortunately it is not supported on the platform. Uh, we suggest you to use virtual environments instead if it is necessary. Uh, I have also provided the link for the virtual environments uh, how to create them, how to activate them, and how to use them, you can find uh, on the link. Um, another question is how to install additional software applications. So basically, uh, you can install portable Linux applications to your home, to your private, or even under shared directories, which means if you install that uh, program under the shared directory, it will be available to all your collaborators. They can also use the package. Uh, but here also the, 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 the applications are architecture dependent. So for Jetsons, you, you need to install a software that is ARM64 or uh, ARCH64 uh, compatible. Whereas in case of Intel machines, it should be AMD64 or x86-64 uh, uh, applications. Um, the software that you install is not updated automatically like the packages. So you should keep them up to date. It is your responsibility. And you can also not install software that needs to be installed under system directories. So uh, that means you cannot install software by using the default package manager of the operating system, which in this case, uh, apt of uh, Ubuntu. So you cannot use it to install packages. If you need to install packages, uh, my suggestion is please contact us first. Uh, we will check the packages. We will install them for you. Uh, uh, and uh, we will also provide you uh, instructions on how to use it. Uh, some software applications, they may need a dedicated infrastructure. Uh, hence, it may take some time for us to provide those applications. Um, for example, GeoNode, uh, it sounds like a software application, but in fact, it's a, it's a, a client server uh, system. Uh, it has dependencies like a database server, a map server, uh, and the application server. So uh, it requires a different kind of uh, system components uh, to be in place. So that takes some time and that takes also some resources. So that's why uh, it may take some time for us to provide that kind of uh, software to you. But we will do our best to, to provide uh, as much as we can. Um, another question is uh, whether you can install Windows applications. And, and the uh, uh, answer is yes. Uh, we support Windows applications uh, through emulation by using Vine. Uh, they are not supported on uh, NVIDIA Jetson units. So if you want to use uh, Windows applications, you need to use um, the big data computing unit or, or the server, so an Intel machine. And because they are running through emulation, they are not guaranteed to work 100%. So there are many applications that work uh, properly without any problems. So we have, in fact, Elvis uh, 3 and Elvis 4 uh, from ITC uh, that are installed running properly. We have, uh, we have also uh, Fraxstat, for example, a dedicated Windows application for a certain kind of um, scientific competition that is also installed. So, uh, and they are working properly. If you want to install a Windows application by yourself, uh, you can install them by using just a single line of command, which is basically uh, here. Uh, for Windows 32 applications, you need to indicate a, a prefix at the location of, of your uh, Windows application. Um, and then uh, following Wine, you just need to enter the name of the executable, the installation executable, and it will automatically install um, the, the system. Uh, the C drive that you use normally on your laptop machines, 
uh, it will be located at, at your home folder under uh, under this Vine directory uh, as a subfolder which is called drive under dash C. So uh, you can store your files if you want under, un, under your home directory, but anything that you store, for example, under my files, my documents, uh, they are stored under this folder. So be, be careful with it. Uh, if you encounter any difficulties, please just contact us and we will help you to install also Windows applications. Um, uh, sir, can, uh, there's some yeah. questions about uh, software that people want to use on the platform that I'm not, not entirely sure about. Yes, which one? Uh, the, the last two questions. Yes. Oracle VirtualBox. Uh, well, VirtualBox is a, a, a virtualization system, so I don't suggest this. So basically, we have a QEMU also installed on the system, so it is in practice uh, possible to emulate different uh, machines. Uh, but the performance that you will get uh, will be really, uh, really uh, low, so uh, I don't suggest. Um, Snap from Copernicus, yes, it is. It, it is supported, so it is one of the uh, items that we are, we are currently working on. Uh, the Intel on the Intel machines, it will be available uh, before the end of the week. Uh, and hopefully next week also we will provide Snap uh, uh, for uh, Jetson units. So it will be available. OK. Um, multiple instances uh, running at the same time. So sometimes uh, pe pe people, they start to use the, the system and then they need more resources. So because, for example, they are coming closer to, to their thesis and there is a lot of competition that they need to finish and just by using a single account um, is not enough. Uh, in that case, they ask, uh, first of all, whether they can connect uh, from different machines or by using different browsers uh, to the platform and uh, as if uh, they are different uh, users. Um, that is not possible. So uh, a dedicated uh, container uh, is created for you when you first log in to the system. And when you log in again, while still logged in to the system, independent of whether you use the same machine uh, or the same browser, the system automatically connects to the same container. So you will you will access the same same unit, not another one. Um, that means you can only have one uh, running instance. If you need more instances, please just contact us. Uh, depending on the need, so we don't promise this, but depending on the need, for example, if you really need to finish your thesis, then we can create an external account for you. And with that external account, at least you will have a second instance that is running, which will speed up the computation. Um, I have two suggestions for, for this kind of needs. First of all, uh, it is always a good practice to profile your code to understand the resource usage and bottlenecks. So uh, your computation may take days, maybe because it is not optimum, or maybe it is not benefit, benefiting from multiple cores that are available on the platform. So please just first uh, look how your uh, code functions, and if it can be improved, that can be a good solution instead of using a a second uh, account. And another suggestion could be to use the distributed computing frameworks like Dusk, which unfortunately I couldn't demonstrate. So uh, be before the training, I updated the system to, to show the latest version, but uh, it looks like unfortunately it created a problem. But uh, anyway, uh, as I mentioned, I will provide you some information about how to use. Um, these kind of uh, frameworks are really useful, so they help you to, to distribute the workload to different machines and it definitely speeds up the computation. Uh, here I have a disclaimer. Um, Multi-threaded computation, so that means doing the computation by using the available cores uh, of a single unit, or distributed computing, which means using multiple units and using the, their multiple available cores, uh, is not uh, for free. So uh, first of all, uh, your code doesn't uh, become automatically multi-threaded if you use a machine with multiple cores. It still acts a single core program. So uh, you need to change your code so that it benefits this uh, available multiple cores. And it is also the same for the distributed computing. So distributed computing is only possible if your code is uh, compatible with distributed computing which means if you only use the frameworks. Um, 
that's why it needs a some uh, some 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 experience and it also needs some some further development maybe from your side uh, but today um, there are many libraries that are available that are compatible api level compatible uh, with the, the the basic libraries that can you you can use which provide in fact multi trading support without code change or it may even support uh, distributed computing with minimum code change so uh, please it, uh, have a look uh, at the options and try to uh, to choose the libraries which provides this kind of support uh, for for the computation um, another question which is not here in the presentation but that also comes quite frequently is uh, uh, can i start a computation and uh, just log out and uh, connect some time after uh, to to get the results um, this is unfortunately not possible so basically when you log out from the system so let me switch to to the system and close this um, then you uh, basically uh, choose the logout uh, fr from the system uh, basically your container is terminated so that means everything that is running on that machine is in fact um, killed. So your computation is 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 cut. So when you uh, log in again, uh, you will have a new machine. Uh, you will have a new machine with with a new running container uh, with all your previous files and also uh, the latest workspace that you left. So basically, if if you if you log out while there are some files that are open, some interactive notebooks or some components, you will also come to the same workspace with those files open, but they were, they are not running. So you need to start them uh, for 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 to to make them run. Um, but instead of uh, choosing logout here, but simply if you close your browser, in that case. The system, because it doesn't know whether you uh, deliberately close uh, your your window or it happens by mistake, it keeps your container running for one hour. And within this one hour, if you connect to the platform again, uh, you connect to the same container that you have. That means you connect to the same uh, computing instance. Uh, and during that period, the computation continues. Uh, this can be quite handy, for example, if you work at IPC and if you have to leave the building at six o'clock sharp, uh, but if your computation didn't finish, uh, you can cycle back within 15 minutes, half an hour to your home. And if you just close the web browser in this way, then and you come back home, you can open it and you can continue to work. Um, there are many uh, users uh, who who use the platform for extended duration? So uh, for deep learning, it is quite common that we have uh, students uh, connected for uh, two three days uh, consecutively, and even we had some cases where people connected uh, for more than two weeks. Um, so it is possible. So you just need to leave your 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 browser open. One option to to keep them open could be. Uh, to have a remote desktop connection to, to a machine that is located at UT or ITC uh, from which uh, you open a web browser and connect to platform. So that, that, that is the easiest way to do. Uh, in, in the future, we hope to provide also some uh, additional means uh, which you can uh, you can use for uh, for sending this kind of computations to, to the platform without being uh, without the necessity uh, to be connected. Let me try the remote desktop again to see if it works this time. Yes. OK. Um, yeah, uh, by clicking the remote desktop uh, icon, basically you can access the remote desktop. The remote desktop uh, by, by clicking uh, F11, uh, I guess. Uh, you can also make it full, full, full screen. That is also a possibility. So here on the left side, right side, we have a sidebar which is normally hidden. So here, if you uh, if you uh, if you click this uh, full screen, then in fact you have a full screen desktop, and in that case, it it becomes really like using your own own machine. So there is no difference. 
And here, uh, from the top applications menu, you can access different applications. One of them, which I already mentioned, is in fact this archive manager. So the archive manager uh, allows you to, to open uh, zip files or other archives. Uh, you can also use the, the file manager. Uh, file manager is quite quite handy because uh, with file manager, in fact, you, you can access all, 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 all the files. You can open them, you can create an archive uh, to, to download, or you can even extract a file um, um, which you downloaded directly. Uh, we have also uh, the applications that are installed. So as I mentioned uh, before, for example, we have QGIS. Uh, we have the latest version of QGIS that is uh, available, uh, 3.18. And that is also integrated to uh, additional uh, GIS uh, programs like GRASS uh, and uh, Saga. So basically all the toolboxes of GDAL, uh, GRASS and Saga are directly available. Uh, you can open open data sets. You can you can open um, let me for example open data set. Uh, this is an example from from Enskede. Uh, some some GOT files. Uh, this tries to open the project. Uh, yeah, as you can see, it, it, it really works nicely. So you can zoom in, zoom, zoom out. You can do uh, all kind of analysis. All the toolboxes are there, so it is like a normal uh, QGIS instance. Um, if if you don't want to use uh, interactive notebooks, uh, and if you if you prefer uh, desktop applications for code development, and for example, we have R Studio that is available, so you, you can you can launch R Studio. You can use a complete interactive development environment. Uh, basically, you, you can you can put your code, uh, you, you can select it if you run, and the outputs are also automatically displayed um, in, in, in the graph. So uh, this is really like using uh, RStudio on, on your machine. Uh, and moreover, uh, we have also, uh, as I mentioned, the Windows applications. So here I will launch, oh, we are on Jetson. So, okay, uh, because we are on Jetson, um, the Jetsons, they because they don't support Windows applications. If you try to run a Windows application, you will get this this error. So let me let me switch to uh, to um, to a Windows machine. So I'll just log out. So here I choose a big data. Company machine, which is an Intel uh, architecture. Uh, so, um, although the architectures are different, we managed to keep the same uh, environment. So, there are slight changes between the, the container images that we have, but uh, all the libraries that are available on Jetson are, in fact, available also on Intel machines, um, except the GPU computation parts. But still, we have the uh, the machine learning packages, but without GPU enabled. So here I am running the same environment, and uh, if I choose Elvis 3, in this case, in fact, uh, you access Elvis 3, and uh, you do uh, the, the analysis that you want. And we are also supporting at the same time Elvis 4 with all Elvis objects. So uh, any course that requires Elvis 2 or 3 can, in fact, uh, use the platform uh, for, for that purpose. Hopefully, we will have Snap and other applications soon also added uh, to uh, to this list. Uh, one thing uh, I can I can tell you, which sometimes people also ask, is uh, how to copy paste uh, text uh, from uh, from the system. So uh, for interactive notebooks, basically, if you if you choose if you select a, a text, uh, and then uh, if you use the normal copy paste function of your of your uh, operating system, for example, Control C for Windows, you can copy paste the text directly. Um, if you use remote desktop, however, this doesn't work like that. So uh, for for remote desktop, uh, if you uh, open like a text editor, and if you if you want to, for example, paste paste the, the, the text that I copied, uh, here uh, the, the paste uh, will not work 
because it is not uh, in, the, in uh, it is not the same environment. What you should do here on the sidebar, uh, there is this uh, clipboard. So here you need to paste the code here in the clipboard, and what you paste will be directly available here. Uh, for the remote desktop. And this is also the same. So if you if you want to copy paste from from the remote desktop, you just choose and whatever you choose, as you can see, is automatically put to the clipboard. So here uh, I come to the clipboard and uh, I do copy paste the, the normal copy paste from here, which I can paste to my own machine. Um, so uh, unfortunately, this is a two, two, two step uh, process, but it is possible. Uh, there's a question uh, whether it's possible to use PyCharm uh, from the remote desktop. I know it's not installed by default. Yes, uh, it is not installed, but yes, uh, we will. Um, well, it, it is possible. Uh, we, we will also provide a spider, which is another interactive development environment. Um, my suggestion is use the interactive notebooks because they will provide you uh, the, the, the better performance. And in fact, uh, maybe uh, for, for Python users, I should also indicate that we have, in fact, debugging option also available. So let me show that to you. So uh, I create a new Python package. So uh, here, uh, normally, uh, on the on the left side, we have also a sidebar which is not directly visible, and this bug icon is, in fact, the debugging interface. So uh, and this is not enabled by by default. But if you choose instead of Python kernel, if you choose a, a extended Python kernel, then in that case, uh, debugging becomes uh, available. So you, you can use uh, the debugging functionality uh, to, to, to debug the code. Um, and we have also code completion uh, uh, available. So maybe very briefly uh, print. If I come with my mouse, uh, then, then basically the command has this uh, dotted underline, and if you click the control, then it will tell you uh, all uh, the information about the function. Uh, so this is supported for uh, not only for Python or R, but for uh, all other languages, we also support this uh, uh, hint. Uh, there is also a common uh, completion uh, feature. So basically, a interactive interface is really like a normal uh, integrated development environment. Um, I will I will provide a more detailed uh, course about uh, a Jupyter Lab and uh, programming with Jupyter Lab. Uh, so partly this is a long topic, so it's not possible to put it in this introduction uh, uh, meeting. But uh, I will provide a, a dedicated training for that purpose. So my suggestion is to to use uh, in fact uh, uh, the interactive notebook. But if you if you prefer, yes, of course, we will also provide uh, uh, PyCharm and uh, a Spider also, like we, we provide for uh, R Studio. Another option that you have is, in fact, here we have the application section. So uh, in the applications, uh, it is possible to access uh, the services that are indicated in the presentation. So if you want to access the GL server, in fact, you can access the GL server directly uh, from, from, from the platform. So you can put it aside and uh, you can write the code and at the same time you can access the data. That is, that is possible. Uh, but, but moreover, we have also, for example, Visual Studio Code. And with Visual Studio Code, uh, you can you can do a complete uh, programming by using a, a integrated development environment that is dedicated to programming. So here you, you create a new file, you write your code, you have all the debugging uh, functionality and that is integrated. Uh, you have all the code completion and uh, syntax highlighting. And basically this is the same uh, visual code that you may have uh, if you install it on your laptop. So it is very easy to also uh, do coding uh, by using Visual Code. So I can also suggest to you to have a look to Visual Code uh, because it provides the same functionality and it provides in a better interface and it is much more uh, quicker than running a desktop application. Uh, on the applications part, we have also additional uh, uh, applications. 
Uh, four of them are important for the platform because they provide you uh, 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 to, to request uh, additional um, features, which includes a request for external user, request for shared data sets, request for a shared workspace or request for software package. Um, of course, you can send us an email indicating that you want to have a certain software package, but the, the, our preference or the better way to do it is in fact to use these uh, tools, uh, which are in fact uh, Microsoft Forms. So you just click and in that case, it opens a Microsoft Forms. Uh, this part is only enabled for uh, UT uh, staff and students. So basically external uh, accounts uh, cannot request this so uh, if you need something like that please contact a, a colleague of yours uh, from 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 ut or from from itc and um, once you finish this two-step authentication uh, the system will open a request form um, you indicate the name of the package, a, b a short description, and if you provide the URL address of the software package, we will download it from there, and we will also check the compatibility. If there are two different versions, one for uh, for uh, for for ARM architecture, another for for uh, uh, Intel architecture, we will also install both, so that you can install, you can use uh, independent uh, from from the unit that you choose. A similar form also we have for uh, requesting a shared workspace. In that case, we ask the name of the project, a short description of the project, which could be your thesis study as well, so it doesn't need to be a research project. Uh, the, the preferred name of, of the workspace that you will uh, uh, that you want to see. So basically the, the, that name is used under this uh, shared folder. Uh, and we ask also the email addresses of uh, project members who needs to have uh, read write access and the, the project uh, members who are guests, uh, which needs to access only read only. Uh, one remark that I can do, please include also yourself because we don't know whether you want a re read write or read only access. So it's on the only way is to, to indicate your name also uh, as one of the project members in the proper place. Um, similar forms we have also uh, to request shared data sets and external users. So you, you can do that by using those links. Uh, we have also three applications that are specific to, uh, to, to ITC. Uh, one is uh, ITC satellite and sensor database. So uh, that database is directly accessible uh, from, uh, from, from the platform. Um, another one uh, is um, um, living textbook. So a living textbook is a very nice initiative which provides uh, an organized uh, content about different topics. In this case, it is more JS and remote sensing oriented, but it, it allows you to uh, to see the concepts and, and how the concepts are linked to each other. Uh, you, you can you can read in detail um, and uh, you can also follow actually uh, by using the, the link of concepts. Um, and the good thing is, uh, you you can you can put it aside, uh, and while writing the code, you can also at the same time uh, read the topic, uh, and maybe try to do the same what is described here in the computing environment. That is also possible. Uh, the last application that we have from ITC uh, is uh, ITC Geodata Warehouse. Uh, as you know, ITC Geodata Warehouse is uh, is not open to outside. So uh, depending on your uh, your connection. So right now I am in the office. So I have I am in the ITC network. So I can access Geodata Warehouse. Uh, if you connect from home, unfortunately, you won't be able to, unless you use a VPN. So there is the only point where VPN can help. Uh, if you want to access some resources which you can access through VPN, uh, but use the platform, in that case, you should use VPN. Um, these are the overall um, functionality that we have uh, on, on the platform. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, I will provide a little bit more hands-on uh, training about how to, how to use it. Uh, so this requires partly a little bit longer period and maybe uh, after COVID era could be a better option for that purpose because I can really help you uh, to, to use it uh, while showing it also hands-on. 
Um, but for the time being, please feel free to to reach us at any time if you have any questions. Uh, if you want some additional functionality, we can always uh, try to uh, provide it for you. Uh, as I mentioned, sometimes it takes time. Uh, we have limited resources and we have also limited resources in terms of, of, of uh, infrastructure. So uh, currently the servers are enough to, to serve, in fact, the databases, the map servers, etc. But uh, depending on the needs, um, it might be partly difficult for us to, to provide those resources. But what we can do, if you have some idle resources that are available, in that case, we can integrate them to the platform and then we can make it also accessible to you or, or better to, to everybody. Uh, this is partly what we did. So basically, um, um, the, the, uh, the infrastructure the, uh, was in fact a collaborative work. So uh, we, we put some resources from, from our center uh, but in fact, the two servers that we use now are uh, are, are provided by by ESA department. Uh, the HIP department uh, donated uh, one server and two storage servers, and uh, six of the computing units that we have right now, which you are connected right now, are in fact uh, belonging to NRS department. So they kindly uh, parked their units on the platform. Um, and once uh, it will be necessary uh, for a project, we will just detach them and give them uh, for, for, for the work. And once it, it's finished, we can also put it back on the platform um, because we have a very thin uh, management layer uh, on top of the machine. So it's really easy uh, to add additional units if necessary. Uh, so this is what we can do. So if you, if you if you if you are from a department and if department has some resources that are available, we will be happy to uh, repurpose, uh, reuse uh, them. We can also upgrade them. If you have a research project or if you are uh, initiating a research project, it could be your thesis study, it could be a new uh, research project, and if you need some computational resources, um, maybe it can be a good idea to contact us first. Uh, maybe the resources might be already available here, which you can use without any limitation. And maybe uh, instead of uh, buying a new uh, machine and trying to set it up by yourself, uh, you can buy the new machine, but we can set it up for you and uh, make it available uh, to you. And if you are not using it also to, to the others. Uh, yeah, with this, uh, basically, I, uh, I finish uh, my presentation and partly the demonstration. So if you have any questions, uh, I will be happy to answer. OK. Uh, in that case, thank you very much uh, for your participation. Um, I hope it, it was useful uh, for, for, for the new, new people. Um, at least I, I think it provides you some, some overview about the capabilities that we have. Uh, using the platform is partly, uh, uh, it is difficult to demonstrate, so it really needs you uh, to, to connect to the platform and uh, try to experiment with it. Um, that is the best way to learn. Uh, I can tell you, uh, please look uh, under this public uh, resources folder and you will find this Python data science uh, handbook. You don't need to uh, know Python, so it aims to also provide you some information about how to use the Python, but it also provides a nice introduction to how to use the interactive notebooks. Um, the interactive notebooks are really becoming the uh, almost the, 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 the main um, uh, way to, to do uh, scientific computation nowadays. So uh, e even um, large uh, computing clusters, they, they provide the interactive notebook interface uh, to, to the researchers. So it is becoming the, the new norm. Um, and so it could be really nice uh, to, to learn it, uh, how they function. And the platform, in fact, provides a nice uh, opportunity for that because you don't need to do anything. You just log in with your credentials and everything is there for you. Uh, so which is, uh, I believe, quite handy. Uh, for more advanced topic, topics like how to access databases from the platform, how to use the GPUs, or how to do machine learning, etc., these are partly quite uh, domain specific. Uh, 
uh, that, that requires a bit more uh, more work from from your side. Uh, but there are very nice tutorials available. So I will try to also um, create a collection of that, that kind of tutorials, which you can have a look uh, to get more information. Uh, and as I mentioned, we are still in the development phase. So uh, maybe in two months, everything will be more stable. But uh, until then, if if a fun if a something doesn't work or if it, something doesn't work as you expected, uh, just uh, let us know and we will help you uh, with that. And we will definitely uh, solve the problem if there is a problem on the on the platform. Uh, again, thank you very much uh, for for your participation, and hopefully uh, we will we will see you also later on the platform. Uh, as I mentioned, it's private. We also don't see what you do. Uh, some questions people uh, ask is whether it can be used for uh, Bitcoin mining. So, you know, the Bitcoin mining requires some GPUs and we have a lot of GPUs that are available. Uh, yes, it is possible, but please don't do that <laughs> uh, on, on the platform. Uh, yeah, uh, we don't have limitations, but we also rely on, on, on your uh, good behavior. Uh, so uh, you are free to to do any kind of computation that is necessary for for your work, uh, and we are willing to also provide more resources if if necessary. But uh, please don't uh, don't use it for for other purposes. Thank you. Uh, the recording was uh, recorded, so uh, if I don't know who started the recording, but if you can stop it. Uh, then uh, I will I will share the link uh, later uh, to all participants. I will also share the presentation to all participants uh, with 